You have before you an original copy of the Waterloo Times, possibly the most famous edition of the Times ever published. The background to this is that the dispatch from Wellington announcing the results of his battles in Belgium, which everyone knew had been taking place because the cannonade was heard in Kent. So everyone was waiting on the result. Major Percy uh, was given the privilege, and it was a privilege because it carried with it automatic promotion, uh, of bringing the dispatch to London. Uh, in practice, that turned out to be a serious task because there was a dead calm in the channel, uh, in the channel and uh, Major Percy and uh, his crew had to row a considerable part of the way across the channel. He then rowed to London and to Downing Street. He was carrying two French eagles. And that was a pretty clear indication of victory. So although he didn't tell anyone what his news was, by the time he arrived at Downing Street, he was followed by a considerable crowd. But then uh, he was directed to a party which was taking place. And he burst into the party, still wearing the blood-stained uniform which he had worn during the battle, and announced the victory. But then he handed over the dispatch and appended to the dispatch was the casualty list. You will see later why the party broke up very swiftly and the celebration was not unmitigated Outside in the streets, they didn't know as a higher proportion of the casualties. At that stage, Wellington himself did not know, as he notes at the end of his dispatch, what the total number of killed and wounded were. A few days later, he reckoned that he and Blucher had lost 30,000 men over the two days. But he describes the Battle of Quatre Bras, where the French attempt to uh, march on Brussels uh, was halted by what turned out to be a desperate action in which the Duke of Brunswick was killed. But eventually the French advance was stopped and the simultaneous battle uh, with the Prussians uh, at Ligny uh, led to a French victory. The Prussians, however, recovered and Wellington retreated to the position of Waterloo, which he'd identified as the best defensive position on the way to Brussels. And there he awaited the French. Now, Wellington's dispatch was written the morning after the battle. Previous evening, he had dined with his staff. At the beginning of the day, his staff had 63 people. Uh, 20 of them were absent because they were killed or severely wounded. So there were 20 empty seats. He himself slept on a pallet on the floor because uh, one of his staff officers, Delancey, was dying in his bed. He wrote uh, the dispatch, which is a model of laconic prose, uh, having had, by most calculations, less than eight hours sleep in three days. Uh, but it is a remarkable uh, document. Uh, however, if you then move over to the right-hand side of the page, you can see the official bulletin issued from Downing Street, which is very short. The Duke of Wellington's dispatch 
dated Waterloo, the 19th of June, states that on the previous day Bonaparte attacked with his whole force the British line, supported by a corps of Prussians, which attack, after a long and sanguinary conflict, terminated in the complete overthrow of the enemy's army and the loss of 150 pieces of cannon and two eagles. During the night, the Prussians under, under Marshal Blücher, who joined in the pursuit of the enemy, captured 60 guns and a large part of Bonaparte's baggage. The Allied armies continued to pursue the enemy. Two French generals were taken. There then follows the Times editorial, which differs greatly in tone from Wellington. Such is the great and glorious result of those masterly movements by which the hero of Britain met and frustrated the audacious attempt of the rebel chief. Glory to Wellington, to our gallant soldiers and to our brave allies. Bonaparte's reputation has been wrecked and his last grand stake has been lost in this tremendous conflict. 210 pieces of cannon captured in a single battle put to the blush the boasting column of the Place Vendôme, and so forth. But if you go to the right of the column, you can see the list. It's a preliminary list of killed and wounded, and it is simply the officers who are known to have been killed and wounded at that stage. In practice, two days later, Wellington said to Croker, British MP in Brussels. It's been a damn serious business. Blucher and I have lost 30,000 men. But if we look at this casualty list, you can understand why the party broke up rather swiftly. Killed the Duke of Brunswick, two lieutenant generals, four colonels, five lieutenant colonels. And then there's the list of wounded many of whom are described as severely wounded and subsequently died. Uh, people did not recover from battle wounds in many cases uh, with the medical knowledge of that time. It's headed by the Prince of Orange, then eight lieutenant generals, five full colonels, 16 lieutenant colonels. So essentially... This was a battle where the offers suffered disproportionately and the highest casualties of all were among Wellington's staff. Wellington himself was operating under the most extraordinary pressure and was continuously under fire and had many of his friends and colleagues killed around him. Uh, so the record of the war does much to confirm Wordsworth's concern with the high cost of warfare. Um, and indeed uh, it has to be said that uh, Wellington uh, was much more in Wordsworth's camp uh, than uh, some others uh, because he used to observe that nothing, few things were as melancholy uh, as a battle won at the cost of your friends. <laughs>